How can you format your slides so they work for you instead of against you? I just did it. You wanna turn your headlines into questions for smoother transitions. And I do wanna acknowledge that if you've never done this before, it's gonna feel a little bit weird, right? Because you're used to probably having at the top headline like background or features or relevant research, right? Just like a topic. But when it comes especially to the virtual medium where we have trouble gauging people's reactions or seeing if people are engaged, the best tool you can rely on is creating that curiosity gap. And hopefully you've identified that this is gonna be a helpful question for you to answer in your prep, right? Those four steps that we talked about earlier. So then you can just copy and paste it here and it becomes your headline. I wanna show you that again, just so we can keep it really meta, right? I took you back to the agenda slide, which by the way, this is another thing that I would encourage you to do. Keep coming back to your agenda slide so you're orienting people in where you are in the agenda. I like to use a big fat arrow to just be like, this is where we are, because that's ultimately what you're doing. You're really steering people's focus, okay? But let's say we came back to the agenda slide. And now as I transition, all I'm gonna do is use what's on the slide to help me transition. Okay, so pretend I just said, we're gonna cover how to format your slides so they work for you instead of against you. So how can you format your slides so they work for you instead of against you? I'm gonna go ahead and answer that. And it's, the sentence is right there, baked in for you. You don't have to spend mental energy figuring out how you're gonna transition, yeah? And you can do a more simplified version of it or even if you're really gung-ho about just keeping it a topic sentence like, research, make sure that at least out loud you're articulating a question you're about to answer. That's how you keep them engaged. 